What's up, my folks? I'm gonna answer a few questions today. Um, I seen that uh, my boy Iron thinks, but I ain't ignoring you or uh, not answering your questions. I don't see a lot of them, to be honest with you. There's always so many on there. Calm down. Uh, you're asking about the the rings. Yeah, the rings is gonna be your weakest weakest link. You might double them up. Okay, I can't remember what the rating is. They're stronger than you would think. But you, if you're worried about them breaking a ring and you only get the two inch rings, double them up. I wouldn't really care about the, the coating on them. I seen you ask about the coating. I wouldn't really care whatever it was coated with. Just get them welded. Make sure they're welded. Keep an eye on them. Make sure they don't egg. But the thing is, man, people, they, they got to understand, the dog doesn't just pop a chain. You know what I'm saying? They wear a chain out. The, the chain will actually start... Uh, Wearing out at the links, that's what in your hardware. You just gotta watch your hardware, make sure you're not getting wore out. But I mean, you know, and I, I seen, yeah, they do pull all that weight on that, but it's like on a track, you know, on them weight pulls and stuff, yes. It's just on a track, it's a, uh, you know, on wheels. Like when they pull a truck and all that, they're not just pulling 4,000 pounds anchored to the ground, you know what I'm saying, it's on a track. You, it'd be like you getting behind it, you could get it pushing and going too. And uh, but you ain't gonna come out here and, and snatch and pop no fucking chain that the chains wear out in the links like and if you can have access to a welder and make your own you know your own stuff that's the uh, good way. just use high tensile strength metal and bolts and nuts when you do it but that's a good way to do it right there just you know make your bend and do it and these are very old and they're still going they're still real strong that's that high strong ass chain but uh Anyway, yeah, they're not just going to pop the chain. They wear them out, okay? Um, they'll wear out the links themselves. What's up, buddy? You staying in the shade? But um, to answer that, yes, your, wink, your weakest link is your, your swivel. Um, second question you asked me was, uh, I think, anyway, could be wrong. Might not have, I might have missed some. But uh, about what's the difference in the hog dog and uh, the attributes to uh, a pit dog not much man there really ain't much you need all the same stuff to be good at it uh but the main thing i think about you want them uh you need a smart durable dog he's got to be smart he's got to be durable he's got to have good mouth if they cannot pop the hide on the hog um they can they can't keep out of trouble okay they got to have good enough mouth to bust that hog hide well that's what i mean I've always done real good with the real hard mouth strands, the real rough strands, the dogs. Uh, but I also, there again, I understand those type of dogs. Um, they need to condition different. You know what I mean? Uh, there, a lot of them types of strands that I was using back when I was real athletic, you know, real active in the dogs. They're real athletic, hard mouth, high ability, um, real high end strains. And I used a lot of different crosses in it. And got some good dogs, some from pretty game dogs, you know. But to, to your brood dogs, you need to have real brood, brood dogs. They need to be real game. They need to be real, you know, real producers, you know, because you'll get the the hog, the dog will always quit at the worst time. He'll quit at the worst time, and it's very similar, very similar to the way they do it. They uh, they'll just look away. You know what I'm saying? When you go to open that gate, you'll see the dog ain't, ain't into it no more. And uh, then you need to have people ready to help you out because uh, you need to switch dogs. I mean, but if you have a good game, solid, durable dog, you know, good, nice, thick hide, something that's got good big teeth, you know, something that can sink down to the bone, got good mouth, and uh, can stay out of trouble, you can catch with them. But they got to be, you know, and, you know, it's different styles of catching hogs. You know, it depends on if you're emptying traps or if you're running them in the woods with bay dogs, you know. Like, I seen a comment. Somebody made some stupid-ass comment. I don't know if the dude was mistaken or just talking trash. But, uh, Scottish Unfit, I seen your comment. And, uh, you know that's a lie. Buster's never made a bad sign in his life. You know, and, it's, and that's the truth. And I'm completely 100% honest about Buster. He's never made a bad sign in his life. Now, is he the best? Was he the best style of dog? No, he was an inbred. What you would exactly what you would think his breeding would be, straightforward, one-dimensional, hard mouth, trying to get you. Like re re, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming to get you. You know, and he'd get fucked up all the time by the hog. And um, he's been. If any dog <laughs> has been uh, tested to the limit, it's been Buster. I mean, the last time he caught, he didn't have no teeth. I shouldn't have let him use them, but. You know, uh, he, he got fucked up so bad. I thought, like, man, for three weeks, that son of a bitch was laid up. 
I mean, I should have never caught. He was already too old to be hunting, but there's no cur in that dog. You know what I'm saying? Those are the types of dogs you want to breed off a solid family. Um, real scatterbred dogs, um, you're not un going to really understand understand what you're getting unless you've owned the dogs because dogs do come out like their family okay the apple does not fall far from the tree you'll get the family traits in those dogs um a three-way cross a four-way cross you're getting into a nice territory when you start getting up more into that you know when you start getting into six and eight and all that shit unless you've inbred those dogs in your own yard and made almost your own strain of them you don't know what you're going to get that's where a lot of the freaks come from that people um you know what i mean it'll be a, a a several different breed crosses and you'll get one that's super super bad motherfucker man um he might not be deep deep game but he's a super bad dog and those are the type of dogs that you that you got to know how to condition you want to condition them to their uh to their ability i mean that's what they are they're a high ability dog they're still somewhat game they're gamer than your average bear but you know what i'm saying they're not um they're not a uh a deep game dog you can tell they're just not i mean they, certain dogs you know can only run at one speed for so long and then when they're like that when they're pure barnstormers they don't have no fucking reverse no steering wheel and all you need to try to school them very good where they're very highly talented even if you got to take and grab to have somebody catch the hog by the back legs lasso it and grab that hog up by the back legs and walk him up to that pig and let him grab him in the ear or the snout and then let him go and let him finish fighting the hog out and learn that he's got to grab that snout and that head to control that hog because these dogs like even my blood now they're a pain in the ass they want to go to the legs and the chest the ass in the dick they want to get all over that son of a bitch and um you got to teach them to school them properly because they're not stronger than a hog they are not fucking going to be stronger they're not going to be able to bully them around you want the strongest pound for pound dog you can get but honestly man a good catch dog can be 40 pounds or 60 pounds you know what i'm saying if he's good he's good and uh to be and just i mean i'm honest as fuck i don't care if what the dog's bread like i don't care who he's from i don't care another he's good a dog he's good dog if he's game good dang game dog he's a game dog you know what i'm saying like these dogs here this dog right here the way they're bred people are asking about breeding techniques and explain line breeding inbreeding all that these dogs are basically what they are is they're off a of buster, which is a proven producer, okay? A producer of game dogs. He's a game dog, and he's off of a producer of game dogs, blah, blah, blah. Her dame, the dame, which was Reed over there, she's getting took back. She is a, a very good, high-talented, good dog. She's a real good dog. And actually, she's a pretty deep game dog. I got to see that. She got shuffled up, you know what I'm saying? And, um... She's held true. She's a true dog. And this is her first litter, so we don't know if she's a producer yet, but that's it. But her the sire to Rita was a proven producer. And the dame to Rita was a proven producer. You see what I'm saying? It says proven producers all the way through. You know, out of proven producers. You know, Dynamite was a proven producer. That's the grand sire. So, you know what I'm saying? All the way through, all the way down. You know, so... That's how you do it. And then, the, and, and then on the bottom side, then we're proven dogs. You know, just that's how you, the best way to breed it. If, you know, you have that choice. Otherwise, you know, yes, I would much rather breed to a champion dog than just a pretty paper dog. But if you have the option to breed to a pretty paper dog that produces that champion and everything is perfect, then you go back to the producer every time. That's the easiest way to explain it. Always go back to what produced the dogs if you have access to it. You see what I mean? But, um, all right, what else was the questions? Shit, there's been a bunch of them. I don't know. Been a bunch of them fucking questions. But, uh, anyway, I hope that answers you, Iron, because uh, I don't want you to think I'm uh, ignoring you, homeboy. You my man. Shit, you've been around for a long-ass time. Um, but anyway... Oh, and people are asking about the puppies, <laughs> about the cowgirl puppy. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I, that's the, the exact type of dog I do not like to sell is that cowgirl puppy. Because one or two things is going to happen with that puppy. She's going to come out hotter than the devil's piss itself and be a total handful and just be a little land shark. 
like almost a danger. I'm telling you, I've had these dogs, them, them types come out just like that, or cold as ice. And the ones that come out like land shark, people don't, they just don't get the respect they deserve. They get run through the ringer, man. People take them, you always see them in the woods, you know, and, and that's the type of dogs that'll ruin your name, you know. The blood's there, the structure ain't, the heart's there, uh, and it seems like them dogs, when they have a fault in something, they gain a strength in something else, and, you know, and, and people, you got to capitalize on that strength, you know what I mean? But uh, if she got to go to it, she'll probably just stay here. I'm the type of person that understands those dogs, and she ain't never going to have the lungs that her, her siblings do. Them siblings will be world-class dogs. They're going to world-class dog men, so... But the little cowgirl dog, man, I don't know. I got to think about it. She's a little bit slower, you know. That's that's the thing with them dogs. I mean, I'd love to let everyone have a great puppy. And I promise you, the next breeding I do, I'll stand behind them too. That'll be just like these. And um, I'll stand behind those dogs. I think they're going to be damn fine dogs. You know, and, and I this is my firm belief on the, the bloodlines of today. If you get a good dog, if you get a dog bred good and... uh. It's off of proven of good dogs. Them puppies, if you raise them right and you do good and there's nothing wrong with them mentally or uh, physically or anything like that, they'll give you everything they got. I mean, from everybody, from all kinds of different strands. I mean, yes, a lot of the strands have been fucked up. They've th There was a decade there where people were just breeding heavy, 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 but, but a lot of the guys would, would show it as heavy and they'd have other shit in there, you know what I'm saying, to make it still work. You mean, you know, if you get dogs built like this um, and it's holding true, you got a good cross going. You know what I'm saying? You got a good strand going. You know, because a lot of times when you start really breeding in inbred heavy, 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 you start getting structural problems. It might only be one or two dogs in the litter, but you'll start getting them. Just like when we bred heavy on velvet, you know, we start getting a little bit of a uh, little bit of cowgirl. You know, when that's common, that's common in those dogs. I know now to back off. Don't go, don't double up, but go go out and then come back. You know what I'm saying? To try to keep it there because I do like what it's producing. You get some really fire ass shit out of it. That that stuff did produce good, does does produce good fire dogs, but like I said, the, them type of dogs that are showing them inbred traits, you get one or two things. You get total hot or total ice. There ain't no in between, and there ain't no fucking brake. They don't have brakes. Brakes are for pussies on them type of dogs. They're one hundred percent pain in the asses. But uh, anyway, folks, y'all take care and keep on bulldogging. And if I missed y'all. Email me back. I promise you, man, when I get time, I go through them, and I'll try to answer you. A lot of guys will tell you I just give you my phone number, and y'all just call me. But y'all take care and keep on bulldogging.